think they gon' know about us Oh, they gon' know about us They gon' know about us Hey everyone, how are you all doing? My name's Tepra and I'm here to give you my episode 9 review of You Who Came From The Stars and like I said, school just resumed so I've been kind of busy and that's why this is coming so late but yeah, I just watched it right now. I haven't watched episode 10 yet. I'll watch it after this recap before giving my recap for that or review for that and so yeah, let's go into business. Oh my goodness, I was so happy this week because we finally got to see what I've been asking and that's like what does him mixing saliva do to him because there have been so many theories flowing around that he'll become human, he'll lose his powers, he'll die and I've just been confused because they never gave us a hint of what will happen to him when he makes his saliva with a human or with someone else and finally we got that answer in this episode because after he kissed um sangi after minjun kissed sangi he immediately fell badly seriously ill and he was literally burning and in sangi's words you could fry eggs on his forehead that was how hot he was so yeah it was pretty interesting to see that and to finally know why he can't kiss people. So that was pretty interesting to see. Another thing that I loved, absolutely loved this week, that was just so hilarious, was the whole caterpillar thing when she was in the bag that she covered herself up and she locked herself up and she couldn't get herself out and he didn't let her out. And she was just like wriggling around like a caterpillar. And then when his fake dad, lawyer Jan, came by and she was greeting him... <laughs> in the bag it was the most hilarious funny thing ever i absolutely love that scene even though when he came and he was giving he was telling her about not pouring spit into anything his meals like into minjun's meals i felt i had mixed emotions about that because i felt dude you're giving her clues that something's wrong with him. He can't, like, take, um, what's it called? Saliva. And you're gonna get her thinking. And we don't want her to get thinking right now because his secret is gonna get exposed. But then, there was that side that I knew he was just concerned about his friend. And he didn't want anything bad to happen to his friend. So, he was just looking out for him. So, yeah, that was pretty interesting to see. Another thing that was so cute was the epilogue. We finally found out because I've been wondering... Wondering, I don't know if anyone else was wondering, but I've been wondering how and why Minjun allows himself to always be with Lawyer Jang, to trust Lawyer Jang, to reveal his secrets to Lawyer Jang, and to be totally, utterly free with Lawyer Jang. And we finally found that out at the end of this episode when he saved Lawyer Jang from committing suicide and Lawyer Jang asked him, who is he? So that was really, really cute to see. I just love that friendship. And then you can see why he's also protective about him. And he doesn't want anything to happen to him. And he doesn't want him to go. Because, dude, if someone saves your life, like me, Jesus saved me. So, yeah, I, I love Jesus. And I am always there for him. You, I don't know if you get what I mean. But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that was really pretty interesting to see. Another thing that I loved were, um, this week was, oh my goodness, we finally saw the mom get a revelation. It was like someone slapped her and gave her the slap that she finally needed to come back to reality. Because the mom has been acting like a total someone that's not a mom and a total bitch, like I said, to her daughter and she's not been treating her daughter right. But finally, when she met with that CEO who told her about her, um, about how she wants her daughter to act in adult dramas and adult movies and do adult stuff, she got really mad and he spoke some sense into her telling her, dude, you just leave off your daughter. You use your daughter and your daughter's career is dead and you don't help her out. ETC, ETC. So that was really, really cool to see. Even though I was so mad at him for what he did by wanting, um, what's her name? Sunji to do the adult stuff. But I was so happy because finally someone told her to her face. And it, you could see that she got the snap back to reality because she was like almost in tears. I think she cried and she felt bad. It was like, boom, boom. It just hit her. And she's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am actually not that good of a mom, if you think about it. Because what makes me different from this man who also wants to use my daughter? So that was pretty interesting to see. I also felt bad for Sungmin. Um, 
Sung Gi um, with her whole dad thing when her dad was saying how he just wants to use her but like she said I also believe he was just saying that because he was hurt by everything the mom was saying and he just kind of wanted to get back at her and he totally did not mean it because I feel amongst everyone in that family the brother and the dad are the ones that actually really really care for Sung Gi but we can see that the mom is finally gonna come back to her senses hopefully from episode 10 or 11 when I see that then I'll know and start taking care of her daughter in a good way. Another thing that I absolutely did not like was the fact that Hui Kong found out that Sungi was living with Min Jun because oh my goodness, his brother is Lex Luthor. Because this if this was Superman, then his brother is Lex Luthor and she is Louis Lane or um Lana and Clark Kent as Do Min Jun. But that aside though, um, I didn't like that he told his brother Lex Luthor, Jae Kyung, about the whole situation because now his brother's gonna know that they live together and he's gonna kill her. And I also don't like the fact that she agreed to go with Hui Kyung to the to his house, his, what is it called? I can't remember, but I didn't like that fact because that makes her so available and so vulnerable to any attempted murder on her life by Jae Kyung or Lex Luthor, like her, I call him. So that, that just got me on edge and I hope the next episode I see something happens and she doesn't end up going to his house because that is going to suck if she actually goes to his house. But yeah, that was pretty interesting to see. Another thing that got me thinking was Sammy. This episode, we saw how Hui Kyung cancelled all... He kind of made it clear to Sammy that he doesn't like her and he likes her friend, but he's going to give her space to get over him before he comes back to be her friend. And I respected him for that because there's nothing like honesty. No need to play around the bush and act like, oh, I don't want to lose you or something like that. He was just sincere and he told her, dude, I have no feelings for you, but I still want to be friends with you. And I think it's partly my fault because of how I've been acting towards you. So that was really cool. I like that they just cut that off and like ended that whole situation right there and I know a lot of people are praying that he ends up with her but I am sorry I still don't pray he ends up with her neither do I pray he ends up with Sungi I just pray he ends up there I don't know with someone else and she ends up with someone else too but yeah I don't want him to end up with her moving on from that and another thing that I actually loved and got me thinking was say me again say me told him about Domin June and naturally in such a situation, Sammy won't tell him about Domin June because that's like kind of helping Domin June's, um, no, that's kind of helping Hui Kyung and, um, Sungi's relationship because if he gets Domi and Jun out of the way then things might work for them so that was kind of a selfless sacrifice she made at that point we got, got you thinking that she actually really still cares for Sungi and it's not natural you've been with someone for that long you have to have at least a little bit of feelings of caring for that person except you're the devil which I am sure she isn't so it has me having mixed feelings about her character I don't know what to do with her character if I should love her character character or dislike her character because she, she you could see that even th when she met Min Jun even though she really wanted to find out what was going on and she manipulated him but it was out of sincere curiosity and actually sincere caring for her friend because she actually cared for her friend and she didn't want anything bad to happen to her friend if this guy turns out to be a monster or something so that was pretty interesting to see another thing that I absolutely loved was the ending when Min Jun went to see Jae Kyung and he kind of told him what are you doing here and Jae Kyung was like dude I can kill you I just let you leave I gave you the permission to leave or something like that and he's like and he suddenly entered the elevator and he left and Min Jun appeared downstairs he teleported and Jae Kyung was shocked to see him downstairs and he told him dude you can't kill me like no one can kill me so that brings us to the thought again that so aliens can't die on earth that means he can't be killed by anyone is that another theory that is gonna walk on for us right now and now it also makes you wonder now that he's like confronted Min Jae um, Kyung this way doesn't that kind 
kind of expose who he is because now Jae Chung is going to start investigating and he might find out some stuff and um, Jae Chung is not just going to let him go and what will Jae Chung do if Jae Chung finds out that he uses like saliva is his weak point saliva is like his kryptonite so what is he going to do is he going to like spit in his drink or kiss him or something and it also gives you this question about the whole saliva thing like does that mean Dae Jung, um, um, Sun Gi and Min Jun can never sleep together? Because, yeah, if he can't mix saliva, how do you expect? That means if they have sex, yeah, he's obviously gonna die or something. Because what else? Like, seriously, he almost died from just a kiss. Now, what about that? So, yeah, it brings up all those questions. And right now, I also have this question, though, about the... What's it called? The guy that commits all the murder, the secretary of Jae Kyung, like, dude, why you gonna be committing all those murders? Like, what's his backstory? Why is he doing what he does? Why is he just killing endless people? Like, does he owe his life to Jae Kyung or something? And is Jae Kyung actually a normal human being or is he one of those, this is now my theory, is he one of those people that like take over other people's bodies? Maybe he stole Jae Kyung, the real Jae Kyung's body and entered his body so he's not actually a human being <laughs> that's possible but yeah that's my theory for this um episode nine i absolutely loved episode nine because we saw them getting closer we saw how sungi was so concerned about him and helped him out and we saw that that her friend that talked bad about her on the internet one time still actually sincerely cares for her and her manager still cares for her and her stylist still cares for her so all these things added up it was an actually good episode for me and i am gonna go watch episode 10 before i give my next review but yeah watch out for my episode 10 review will come out in a little bit after this for me to you please don't forget to share like subscribe and keep being awesome beautiful people you are and watch out for more fun stuff from me i'm watching on a lot of huge things for this channel so watch out for them and watch out for episode two of all things korea if you don't know what that is go check my other videos and you'll find out it's a tv show a k-pop k-drama korean tv show by me and oiza so watch out for more things more awesome things from us from me to y'all yeah no i've got an envelope for y'all peace Come on, I guess I'm just a misfit, huh? Yeah.